mega exclusive. This is a mega exclusive. CNN News 18 has now accessed exclusive intelligence note on the murder of Ripu Daman Malik. The acquitted suspect in the 1985 Air India bombings. Uh, remember, he was shot dead in a case of what seems like targeted killing in Canada on Thursday, which was just yesterday. Now, we have accessed this exclusive intelligence report. The note that Intel note states that Malik was clear not to allow the Akal Taks Jathedar to use his school or college stage to speak against India. Now, it's also important to note the other aspect of this Intel note. It states that earlier on 17th January this year, Malik had written a detailed letter addressing it to the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, praising him for taking tens of initiatives to redress the long-pending grievances of the Sikhs. The letter virtually rattled anti-India elements in Canada. Now, Khalistanis backed by ISI are behind the cold-blooded murder of Ripu Daman Malik. This is also one crucial aspect of that Intel note that has been exclusively accessed by CNN News 18. It is therefore quite obvious that there are concerted efforts to use unfair means to scare voices that dare to align with India. This is the last bit that has been accessed by us of that crucial intel input uh, that has been shared on the murder of uh, Ripu Daman Malik. Remember, he was shot dead yesterday in British Columbia in Canada. So let's also take you, was Ripu Daman Malik's pro-India stance behind his murder? Here are some instances which have been cited by that intelligence note that we were also referring to. Uh, didn't let his forum be used against India. That is made amply clear uh, in that intel note as well. Uh, he, Ripu Daman Malik exposed anti-India elements on a talk show. Remember, uh, he has been doing this. He's been taking a stand against all those Khalistani backed by ISI agents and um, those elements in Canada as well. He exposed agents as working on behest of Pakistan. This is something he had also mentioned in the letter that Ripu Daman Malik had written to the Indian Prime Minister earlier. He wrote to Prime Minister on January 17th this year, praising the pro-Sikh steps that had been taken by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Khalistanis are behind Malik's cold-blooded murder. This is what Intel sources are telling CNN News 18. And efforts are on in Canada to scare voices aligned with India. This is another crucial aspect of that Intel note that has been accessed by CNN News 18. And with that, uh, let's also now quickly go across uh, to one of our guests, Mr. Shashikant, who's joining me on uh, the newscast at this moment. All right, uh, let me also introduce Mr. Shashikant. He's a former IPS officer and the ex-DGP of Punjab. Uh, Mr. Shashikant, if I could bring you in on this Intel note that has been exclusively accessed by CNN News 18, this clearly goes on to establish the fact that Ripu Daman Malik's murder that happened yesterday in Canada is a case of targeted killing. Do you not agree that the Khalistan threat is now growing in Canada? Certainly, there can be no two doubts. The murder of uh, Ripu Daman Singh Malik, uh, who had written a letter to the Prime Minister also praising his efforts uh, to, for the Sikhs, for the community, for the nation, it is more than evident that the Khalistanis are certainly getting rattled. And where are these Khalistanis? Khalistanis, as on date, it's, it's a dead movement in Punjab, but the person sitting abroad, particularly in Canada, part US, Europe, all of them supported by the ISI, the notorious ISI, are trying their best to revive this particular minute, this particular thing again in Punjab. And what does what, what a person wants? It's one of the nails, one of the final lanes in the coffin of this uh, militants, this Khalistanis. Uh, this letter and the murder of Rifu Daman Singh Malik 
amplifies shows that ampli. Thank you. Right. Also, uh, Mr. Shashikant, uh, the fact that uh, this has happened on a day when the statue of Mahatma Gandhi was vandalized with Khalistan written in big bold letters right below the statue. What do you make um, of the timing of this targeted killing? This indeed is, is also happening at a time we are seeing a rise in hate crimes in Canada itself. And what does it speak of the government currently in Canada? Yeah, this all shows that whatever is going on in Canada, particularly vandalizing the statue of Mahatma Gandhi and the murder of Rikul Zaman Malik, it all appears to be a very well orchestrated, very well planned attempt on part of the pro Palestini elements with the help of the notorious ISI. And it's really indeed sad that the Canadian government is just a mute spectator to all these things which are happening here. First, there were gangs. Uh, which were sort of uh, which are creating trouble in Punjab, like the recent murder of Musawala and all those things. Shows they right. are apparently giving them money, giving them weapons, giving them ideological support, giving them monetary support. Why I fail to understand why government of a sovereign country like Canada, which stands by and always swears by the human rights, they have not been able to take any action, stop this vandalism and this kind of a planned tirade against our country. Right. And, and since we are talking about the government in Canada, uh, I'd like to refer to that letter that uh, was written by Ripudaman Singh Malik on 17th of January this year itself, praising or rather lauding the efforts made uh, by uh, the Prime Minister's government in terms of, uh, you know, taking initiatives to, uh, to, to protect the Sikhs. Uh, having said that, that letter also uh, mentions... Uh, uh, the fact that there have been anti-Modi steps being taken in Canada. I'm going to also speak to you about this bit because I'm also joined in by our uh, reporter Anand. All right, I'm joined in by my colleague Anand Narasimhan who's joining us live at this hour. Anand, uh, please go ahead and share some details with us. Well, thanks for that. And uh, uh, afternoon to our ladies, uh, uh, to our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big development, what's happened. Now, we've, we've accessed the intelligence report and the intelligence note on the killing of Riputaman Malik. Riputaman Malik had written a letter uh, sometime in January 2022. This is the copy of the letter that we have. Even Ashashikanji is with us. And here he is uh, saying that uh, this is point number two. Now, point number two in this letter in January, he has said, and I'm reading this, uh, while appreciating wholeheartedly your government for the above listed positive steps to sincerely address grievances and demands of the Sikh community, I'm concerned at an orchestrated campaign by some misguided members of my community against you in person and India at large. I have separately appealed them to desist from the vicious and motivated campaign ostensibly by their own, but actually at the behest of some uh, for foreign powers interested in destabilizing India and challenging India's national integrity and instead be appreciative of the unprecedented po positive, uh, positive gestures made by your government, copy enclosed. I look forward to personally work together with your government and have also appealed members of my community to engage with the government for redressal of pending issues of concern to Sikhs in a democratic way. Now, Riputaman Malik is a Khalistani. He was in the banned list, but he is somebody who has... Uh, uh, in a way, not just reform, but also seen the efforts made under the current uh, current government uh, towards the Sikh community. Now, when he expressed all of this, he met with a lot of resistance. Now, we're given to understand, and this is further information that we have, that he actually came to India and he was there all through May. He visited uh, a, a lot of the... Uh, areas which are pilgrimages or Sikh pilgrimages through that course of uh, through that period and he left back towards to Canada sometime in June so that is the that is the uh, uh, in, input that we have that in 2018 uh, he was uh, uh, when Canada Prime Minister uh, when Canada Prime Minister Justin Trudeau had come to India at that time uh, Captain Arvinder Singh had uh, handed over a list in which there were a lot of terrorists or people who were Khalistanis who were banned, who were living in Canada and who were, in, who were acting against the interest of India. And uh, Hardeep Singh Nijjar, the person who has also been called out by Riputaman Malik, was part of that list. Now, further to the invest investigation details that we have and the, the intel note that we have accessed, this has all happened, that in this case of Riputaman, there was, he's the founder of the Khalsa Credit Union and also the Khalsa Credit, uh, Khalsa School. He started the Khalsa College and had invited the Akhal, Akhal, Akhal Takht Jatthe, Jatthe Dar for the, uh, for the event. 
but he was against the Jathedar making any comments against India. So that's where uh, the uh, Riputaman Malik started getting threats, and there were also th threats to Gherao and block uh, 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 and, and create tr problems. Now, Malik was very clear that he will not allow the Jathedar to use the school and the college stage to speak against India. He actually went ahead and did a talk show on Sanja TV. Uh, with a journalist by, who goes uh, with a journalist and where he called out two, two people, Muninder Boyle and Hardeep Nijar, and he called them bullish. Now, he made the same reference that he's made in this letter where he said that people who are obviously working at the behest of some agencies of foreign government. This part that, that the Intel note mentioned is also part of point two in his January 2022 uh, letter. So clearly, there are the involvement of Khalistani elements. Now, this is what we are given to understand that this letter, this date, this letter dated the 17th of January, this actually made Riputaman Malik uh, perhaps an enemy in the eyes of those who are harboring and who are clearly trying to foster anti-India sentiment in the Sikh community in Canada. And this actually rattled them. Now, uh, Hardeep Nijar, now we are given to understand soon after this letter on 23rd January, using a, stay, a temple stage in, in, in Surrey, a Sikh temple stage, Guru Nanak Sikh temple stage in Surrey, Hardeep Nijar actually spoke against Riputaman Malik for over one hour and he called him, quote-unquote, Komka Gaddar, an agent, etc., calling upon the gathering to boycott Riputaman Malik and teach him a lesson. And there are others who, include, uh, who also launched a scathing campaign against Riputaman Malik. They include Moninder Boyle, who was also mentioned by Riputaman Malik, who said that they were being bullish. Gurpreet Singh Sahota, a journalist who's working for Satinder Pal King and Pari Dulai, uh, uh, again in, uh, again in uh, Canada. So these are the allegations and these are uh, aspects of the intel note that we've, uh, we've got. Now, a few years ago, Riputanaman Malik had also started printing copies of the Sri Guru Granth Sahib after obtaining permission from the SGPC. Now, if there, there is a lot of information that is now coming out, but what stands out is here is a Khalistani, an erstwhile person, individual who was banned from India, but this person has had a change of heart. He takes a position which says that this current government is actually working for the betterment and along with the Sikh community, and he has listed all the activities. He said that that uh, uh, you have eliminated the blacklist of re uh, restricted visit to India of thousands of Sikhs and granting passports and visas to asylees and their families and reopening of hundreds of 1984 riots closed cases leading to conviction and jail term for some, declaring the 1984 riots as a genocide. So all of these aspects he has noted. He has also said opening of the Kartarpur corridor, Kar Sahib corridor, and also uh, and he's also. Uh, uh, picked up and said that celebrations of the 350th birth anniversary of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, 450th birth anniversary of Hindi Ke Ch Chadar, uh, Hind Ke Ch Hind Ke Chadar Shri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, and last but not the least, recognizing the martyrdom of Shri Guru Gobind Ji's younger son, Saib Zada Baba Zoravar Singh and Saib Zada Baba Fateh Singh, and declaring 26th November, December as Veer Bal Divas. So he has. Uh, he has, he has listed a lot of the initiatives taken by this government and said, I believe that you are working in the interest and I'm trying to tell the community that this is a different government and we need to have a different consideration and our outlook is different. But he's also said that there are those who are completely in the throes of foreign entities that want to bleed India, destabilize India and create animosity among the Sikh community here against the rest of Indians. So this is something and, and also try and sow seeds of secession. These are aspects that come out and then raise a huge number of questions uh, on why are these elements being given a free run in Canada. Just the other day, we had the desecration of Mahatma Gandhi's statue. Again, Khalistanis were involved. We have, if you look at the Sidhu Musewala murder, again, the mastermind Goldi Barar is operating out of Canada. Where is the cooperation from the Canadian influ uh, authorities in terms of cooperating with those who are, who are working, who are using Canadian soil to work against Indian interests. We also saw these elements manifest again when the Hindu community turned around and said that the kind of behavior which is being displayed is wrong and there should be action taken. And they had the uh, Hindu community coming out and standing up to uh, certain calls and certain aspects which the Khalistanis and they were doing targeting the Hindu community in, in, in Canada. So a lot of aspects that are coming to the fore, but with Riputaman Malik, he is somebody who was blacklisted. 
somebody who's had not just realized and had a change of heart, but somebody who was working towards further integration of the global Sikh community with India and calling out those who are agents of a foreign entity, agents of an enemy who are trying to destabilize India. This is where it stands in terms of the, uh, the, the murder of Ripudaman Malik. And it's not just an ordinary murder. There is lots more that uh, hinges on this. That's the big aspect that we are trying to put out here uh, when we are sharing all these details with our viewers. Back to you. Thank you, Anand, for bring, bringing us all those details uh, also mentioned uh, in the letter as well. Let me quickly go back to Mr. Shashikant, who's also joining us on this newscast. Uh, Mr. Shashikant, you heard what Anand had to say. This, Of course, uh, the murder of Ripudaman Malik arrives as the last nail to the coffin as far as relations between India and Canada are uh, concerned. Um, we've also discussed at length how there's been this lack of effort on part of the Canadian government uh, even though there was a thaw of relations when um, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met Justin Trudeau at the G7 summit, there was a new hope. It seemed like uh, his government would take a stance against the Khalistanis uh, in Canada because there was a silent promise that had emerged from the summit because we were told that even uh, Indian Prime Minister had conveyed his thoughts uh, to the Canadian Prime Minister as well. But how do you see things standing as of now uh, with the murder uh, or rather the heinous killing of Ripu Daman Malik, a man who was trying to make a change to the Sikh community, not just in Canada, but in India as well? Uh, just uh, besides comment on this, I'd just like to add a couple of sentences. Right. I just want to tell the viewers the way, in fact, I have was harassed by the Canadian authorities in the border only because I have sought extradition of certain persons drug smugglers from Canada and my CWP 20059 of 2013 which is going on the high court. They were mighty annoyed. They were mighty annoyed because I've been talking about it. They mentioned it. They have been talking about Palestine and uh, Canada being a hub of drug, drug smugglers, etc. etc. Leave that apart. Coming back to the subject, yes, whatever has been said by Mr. Nasimha is absolutely correct. Uh, maybe, I don't know whether there was a call between the relations between India and Canada. But somehow or the other, Canada has been a nursery for grooming uh, pro militants uh, and then drug smugglers. And like, like they, they, they themselves said, that is a good section of that. Our, our youth, they, they rank higher on the list of the RCMP. As far as this, all these activities are concerned, now the murder of Ripple Manasin has shown that they are gaining ground. And the Canadian government is just a mute spectator to there too. Do, do they think that the Indian government in India will just keep on sitting idle like this and permit a foreign country to interfere directly or indirectly in the sovereignty of our nation by way of uh, a section which is trying to promote Palestine and uh, uh, this uh, smuggling of uh, arms and drugs and all those things? I don't think Indian government has to take a stand. They have to take a stand. And uh, they have, right. and this is the ample proof murder of Ripu Daman the murder proof that these elements are gaining ground there day by day. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Shashikant, for sharing in your views with us. And with that, let's now shift our attention over to the other CNN news.